G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now as we make our way through the loop components module, this module is going to be focused on the table component. Now we often think of tables as boring old things that contain rows and columns. I'm sure you're familiar with these inside of a Word document uh, to structure our data and to organize um, different pieces of content. But as you're going to see shortly, when we look at them as a living, breathing component inside of a Word page, they become really powerful pieces of um, pieces of content that allow us to collaborate and share and work on um, rows and columns and individual work items or things inside of that table to really create a um, a living, breathing component of a page. So let's just dive in and have a look at the loop component that we call the table component. And the um, the example we're going to use in this module is that we're going to build out an issue tracking table uh, and we're going to start that from scratch. So we can see on the screen here, I'm inside the loop application. Um, now, the first thing we're going to do is hit the forward slash, all right? So we'll hit the forward slash and that will allow us to see all the different components that we have available. Now, obviously the one that we want to uh, select here is our table. All right, so we can see that if I keep scrolling up, one, two, three, four from the top is our table. Now it's pretty basic, it comes by default with two columns uh, where we can start to build out our table. Now what we're going to do first is I'm just going to add uh, some text or a paragraph text here. So we're just going to segment this out and let's call this issue tracker. All right, so we'll just pop in um, our label here. Now let's highlight this and I wanna make this a little bit larger. So let's give this a H2 element there, all right? So it makes it bigger, bolder, and it just stands out and segments our page a little bit more. Now we can see here, we've got our two columns. Now you'll also see as we hover around our table, we've got, and we when we hover in between our columns, we've got the ability to add some columns. So you can just see there, I've just added another column. Now you'll see here, our, um, our six little dots here, obviously like with our other components that we've seen, we can create uh, and extract this table as its own component and we can also delete it. Now this little icon here allows us to sort our table and we'll have a look at that in just a minute after we add some data. The next thing allows us to show or hide our columns. So we might not want to show our columns uh, or every single column all the time. So we can show and hide. So for example there, I have just turned off the visibility of column three. If I turn it back on, I am now good to go. This little icon here allows us to expand the width of our table. So when I click this, you'll see that it expands to the full width of our uh, loop page. And then we can just contract it again like so. If we have a look at our, um, our uh, left-hand side column here, this allows us to drag and drop our rows of data. So all of a sudden, our boring old table has become um, more powerful, more collaborative, and just nicer um, and more interesting to use. Now we can also do the same thing with our columns, all right? So what we can do here is we might want to reorder our columns. So we can just drag and drop our columns, grab the handle and drag and drop our columns from left to right and reorder them as we need to, okay? We can also delete them. So if I don't want column number three anymore, we'll hit the recycle bin and we are now uh, left with our two columns. If I hover over on the right-hand side, again, I've got the plus button and I can select uh, to add a column. Now what you'll notice here is that we've got a little drop down menu when we hover over the column title. Now when I click this, this is where we go to rename the column. So for example here, we're building out an issue tracker list. So I'm going to give this first column, I'm gonna call this issue. The next one though, I am going to call, rename this one, I'm gonna call this category. The third column in our list, we're going to use a status column and we'll stop there for now. Now, you'll also see that we can change the type of column that we're using. By default, we're selected with a text column. Now, that's okay for the issue because that's where we're going to enter in some text. But with our category and our status column, I wanna change this to be a label. 
All right, so you'll see here that we've got different types of column. We've got number, we've got date, we've got person, we've got votes, and we've also got a label. Now, when I click on label, you can see there that we've got two default um, categories or groups. We've got progress, we've got four options in the progress, we've got priority, which has got us three options in our priority. Now, because we're um, looking at a category here, what we might do is let's add a new label group. So I'm gonna go add, and I'm going to go and give this an, a, a name of category. So let's go um, bug, we'll go um, feature request, and we will just feature request, and we'll just leave it at the two options there. All right, so we'll hit save. So now what we've got is the column type has been set to the label and we're using the category uh, label group. Now let's now change the status column here. We're gonna change the column type and we're gonna, going to choose, we'll call this progress, all right? So we'll change this to progress. So you'll notice that that changes the actual title of that column as well. All right, so you can see that it changes the title um, to the, the, the group name there. All right, so now we've got our three columns. Now, I also want to add another column, but I want to change the column type here to be a person column. All right, I'm going to rename this and I'm going to uh, rename this to, let's rename it to owner. All right, so we'll name that owner. One more column we're going to add is a date column. So again, I'm gonna change the column type and let's click date and let's rename this to end date. Okay, so now we've got our table all set up. So we can now add our issue, all right? So let's add an issue. Uh, let's go OneDrive not syncing and we'll give this a category. So now when I select in or put my cursor inside of this text box or this box here, you can see that I've got the ability to choose from our options. Now this could be a bug, the progress, not started, owner, we can set Alex as the owner here. Now you'll also notice here, now Alex doesn't have access to this page. So you'll see that we get this little message. So I want to bring in Alex into so that he's got access to this table and this page. So I'm going to share and notify directly from that column. So now Alex has been notified that ha that he ha and he will now have access. Now I want to give this an end date. So I want this issue to be resolved in a week. So I'm going to say right, let's give it an uh, an end date of one week's time. All right. Now we can continue on adding our rows here. You'll see I've got a new button. So when I hit new, it gives me another row and I can, I can continually add new rows to my table. You'll also see that we've got this option here. Now because I've selected the own or a person or a people column, you'll see that when I continually add people, so I might say, let's say cannot uh, access um, a document, all right? Again, let's just call this a bug. We'll go progress. Let's make this in progress. I'm gonna assign this to Megan and I wanna fix this by tomorrow, all right? So here we go. And we've got two items and you'll see that it, this is a, um, a count of how many items each particular person has got. Let's have a look at a different type of column. So now I'm going to hit another column and I'm going to hit column number seven. Now, as we're expanding our table here, let's now expand our table using this icon. So now we've got a full width column, a full width table. So I'm going to change the type of column and we're going to set this as a number column, all right? Now, this doesn't really relate to the issue tracker, but watch what happens when we add some numbers here. 100, let's give this 200, let's give five, five and 10. You'll notice at the bottom of this column now that we've got some calculations and some maths being done automatically. Now we've got three things that we can do. We can create and visualize the sum, the average of that column, and also the count of that column. So you'll see the count one, two, three, four, five. We've got five rows. We'll see the average and we'll see the sum. 
All right, so a little bit of uh, functionality there automatically for us around a number column. I don't really want this column now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the column and I'm just going to delete that. Now you'll see, again, we can just drag and drop our columns up and down as we need to, all right? So let's now maybe move um, cannot access document up to number one and you'll see that we're now up there at number one, okay? Now we can also sort these. So if we hover over um, the little down chevron here, you'll also see that we can sort ascending or descending. So if we go ascending, you'll see that the blank ones appear at the top. Now, if we go descending, you'll see that these ones appear um, at the top there and the blank ones um, at the bottom. We can then also delete our, our rows if we need to, like this. So we, we click uh, in, the, in the first column and then the little recycle bin then, um, then appears that we can uh, then delete each row, all right? So all of our sudden, our boring old table that we're used to working inside, let's say uh, Microsoft Word, becomes a really living, breathing, dynamic um, table that we can all collaborate on at the one time um, inside of this particular uh, page here. So let's now go and add more functionality to our table. So we've seen we've got different types of columns or the column types. Let's see what we can do inside of a text column. All right, so more than just um, text, all right? So maybe we wanna bring in some additional resources or some additional information. What about some documents or a bulleted list or something like that? So let's now add a new column. We'll rename this column uh, as additional information, okay? And we'll leave it as a text column for now and we'll click inside our box. Now, let's say that we've got a reference document to this particular issue. We can use the at mention and we can start to type in the name of our document. So let's say we've got a uh, this PowerPoint uh, slide deck here relates to this issue of OneDrive not syncing. So we can hit the, um, the, the document itself and it puts a link directly to that document. What if we wanna add some more information? So let's just, uh, again, continue down the um, and expand this cell here. So I've just hit the shift and enter. And if I hit the forward slash, we can see that we can add some more content or some more context around this particular item. So I might want to, maybe let's say, let's add an emoji. So let's add a little emoji. We might also um, then wanna bring in some other types of files so we can add multiple files. Let's hit the, um, the forward slash again. Maybe we want to add, um, let's say a numbered list, all right? So I'm just gonna remove this emoji here. Now, this could be the steps to, um, to help troubleshoot OneDrive not syncing. So we'll go step one, step two, step three. Now, everyone that has access to this table or this issue tracker list can now add some context or their experience or something that they've picked up to help Alex resolve this issue. So we can all add our content inside of here, okay? So not only that text column allows us to add text, but we can bring in all of our other resources and in the use case here around an issue tracker, around this individual issue, we can then bring in documents and other people or um, do a step-by-step -step guide inside of this particular column as well. And just by hitting the forward slash, we can then see that we've got the, the, um, the items that we can add inside of this column. Now, the last column that we've got in here is I'm going to use this insert uh, option here. So not only can we use the plus button, but we can select insert and let's go column to the left. So we've just added a column to the left of the, of the additional information column. Now let's change the column type and we're going to change the column type to voting. So we can see here now that this all this column, each cell associated to each row has changed uh, into a voting um, uh, option for us. So let's now rename this and go your votes. Um, we might wanna vote on priority. Okay, so let's actually, let's call this priority voting. Priority, uh, priority voting, 
All right, so now what we can do is say, yeah, I think that's really important, not so much this one, and then all together we can collaborate, collaboratively work on the issues that we think are more, uh, we should prioritize uh, in any given point in time. All right, now as with other loop components, the power comes when we can create and extract this table as, a, as an individual component in itself. So we can click our six little dots that are associated to this table and then click create component. And that's going to then wrap this whole table in its own component then that we can then extract. We can then embed that or insert that into the body of an email or into a Teams group chat or even into a Word document as well. Now that wraps up our module on the loop table component. So hopefully you can see now the power of the uh, table component. No longer do we need to think of tables like we do in, the, in uh, Microsoft Word where they're just these boring old columns and rows. We can bring lots of other resources in. We can collaboratively work on the table itself. Uh, and there's a lot more dynamic content that we can add and use inside of a loop uh, table component. So thanks for watching. Hope that brings you some value and I'll see you in the next module.